My name is Kelly Bonner, and I'm an information specialist with NICPAD. Today, we will be discussing modifications and adaptations to the Alabama Physical Fitness Assessment Test. Have you ever played or seen someone play those minute to minute games? Sometimes the task seems completely impossible, like trying to balance two golf balls on top of each other. But sometimes, all you need to know is the right strategy. Well, the same can be said for adapting the fitness testing. The test may seem impossible, like finding an aerobic functioning test for a student who can only use their head. But with the right strategy and the know-how, it certainly is obtainable. Today, I am going to show you some different ways to adapt the test, but this certainly isn't an exhaustive list. You know your students best, so I challenge you to get creative and think outside the box so you can test each and every one of your students. And remember, it is important to note, with all adaptations, there are no standards available. When recording data, it is imperative that you keep excellent records of the tests conducted for a given fitness component so that the test can be re-administered at the end of the year and compared to their pre-assessment records. Let's start with the one mile run. For visual impaired runners, provide a guide runner and rope. The tether is held in the hand of the guide with the student with the visual impairment. Encourage the guide runner to keep the pace of the student runner. A peer assisted run is to have another student or aide run beside a runner that needs continual reminders or direction while running to encourage a constant speed. Allow the student who uses a wheelchair to perform the test in a ball chair or a racing chair. Have the student perform the full distance whenever possible. Make sure that the course is on a level hard surface. If any student can't complete the entire distance, have them run or push a predetermined distance and measure for time. If a student uses a power chair but has appropriate functional capabilities, allow them to go predetermined distances using a scooter board or any other means. Provide a student with an arm bike or hand crank to complete the test. Allow students to use any continuous movement possible. For example, arm jacks, arm circles, whatever they can do. Measure the time and movement continuously sustained. For students with very limited function, allow them to perform a breath test. For example, you could see how far they can blow a ping pong ball. Another option is to provide a slalom course for students who use a power chair. It is important to note though, just because a student uses a power chair doesn't necessarily mean that they should not complete the given test. Studies have shown heart rate increases for individuals who are power chair users when completing a given course. So the main concern should be battery power and effectiveness of the testing. Moving on to the pacer test. Try to modify as little as possible. The object is to maintain the integrity of the test always. You can provide visual cues such as signs, arrows, blinking lights, or interpreters for students with a hearing impairment. Or you can provide a demonstrated or audible cadence from an adult or paraeducator for students who easily stray off task. Allow them to perform the test with the student. This may also include hand holding or a little guided push whenever necessary. Provide a guide rope and guide runner for students with a visual impairment. You can allow the student to have the increased time to reach the line or modify the requirement for the cadence. You can modify the course for students who use a wheelchair if they have trouble with that 180 degree turn, allow them to make 90 degree turns instead. You can allow students to use an alternate means of locomotion, which can include, but not limited to, scooter boards, crawling, rolling, scooting, any way that they can get across it. Allow students to use their mobility device, such as a wheelchair, walker, gait trainer, or crutches. Allow the student to perform any movement for a given time at an increased cadence. You can use arm circles or arm jacks for this as well. The next section we will cover is muscular strength, and specifically the push-up test. Here are some of the modifications. Allow for proper positioning with only partial lowering of the body. Allow for a modified cadence. Allow for students to perform push-ups from their knees. You can also allow students to perform a plank whenever a push-up is not possible. For students with partial or no function in their lower body, allow them to perform the push-up off the edge of a mat. Require the student to go as far off the mat as they are capable of. Allow the student to do a wall push-up. Allow for a student to do a chair push-up using the arms of his wheelchair or a stationary chair. 
You can also allow for a student to perform a chest press motion with either exercise bands or lying in the supine position with hand weights. When testing abdominal strength, here are some of the modifications. Allow for an assistant to hold the feet down. You can allow for their hands to slide down their thighs. Or you can also allow them to perform a smaller range of motion. You can allow for students to perform a negative sit-up. Or you can allow for an assisted pull to initiate the movement, such as a medicine ball or paraeducator. This is helpful for students who have limited abdominal function. You can also allow for a modified cadence. You can allow for visual or tactile cues for hand placement. And finally, you can allow for a rocking motion performed by holding onto the knees and leaning back and forth. You can allow students to hold a paraeducator's hand or stick to provide assistance whenever necessary. Provide an incline wedge or mat for added support behind the student if necessary. Allow the student to perform a crunch from their wheelchair only if the student is unable to safely transfer out of their chair. Alternative abdominal exercises to be used by students with little or no abdominal function can include walkouts, rollouts, figure eights, maintaining balance on an exercise ball, or anything you think that will work. The final section is flexibility. Here are some of the modifications you can use when administering a flexibility test. Allow the student to begin with an easy distance such as touching your knees and gradually increase that distance. Allow the student to hold the position for a shorter amount of time, rest, and then repeat the move. You can place tape marks on the student's legs to serve as a visual or tactile goal. You can measure the maximal range of motion using a ruler or measuring tape for forward trunk bend, trunk rotation, or the height of the arm. Be sure to provide a measure of flexibility that is pertinent to the student's functional capabilities. For example, a student with a spinal cord injury and little to no function in their hamstring should perform an upper body flexibility test instead. For a student who is unable to transfer out of their wheelchair, have the student reach down the side of their chair as far as possible. Compare both the left and the right sides. One final note, if you're nervous about getting that student out of his or her wheelchair, don't be. First thing to do is ask the student. They always know best, and more than likely, they get out of that chair at least once or twice a day. So ask them how they do it. If not, you can always consult their parent or a medical professional that's familiar with their case. It may also state it on their IEP. But be sure to ask the student first because they may have an easy, quick way to do it. On our website, you can access any resources that you might need. You can also contact us through our live chat and ask any questions that you might still have about how to adapt something. So feel free to check that out. We appreciate you watching. Thanks.